Quick service announcement time. Until the 29th of December, this channel is proudly sponsored by HelloFresh UK. You can get discounts on fresh recipes and meal kits delivered to your door. You can use the code down in the description at checkout or the link down there as well. And you'll get 50% off your first box and 35% off the three after. I genuinely don't know how to introduce this one in a balanced way. We have got a brilliant director of football and for the first time I am genuinely excited about our season. We're flying in the National League South, there's players coming in of high quality all the time and I am just a very happy man. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 36 of the head coach with me, Daniel. And I didn't think this day would come in this year's head coach. It's all worth it halfway through the fifth season. There's players flying in. We've got a wonderful squad. We've missed out on a couple of great targets, but the director of football is working his backside off. We've got a massive chance to get to the FA Cup first round today. Boreham Wood, real life FA Cup giant killers two years in a row. They're the side we've got to get past. And in Slough, away the club that the fans want us to finish above in the league are on the verge of the playoffs themselves so if you're looking forward to that and meeting all the new faces please do put a thumbs up on the video i'm really enjoying my time i feel we've earned this right to have a really good year so hopefully someone will come in and offer us a job at some point but for now I'm just very happy because if we go and have a look at the transfers, director of football still trying to bring in players. There's a couple he's missed out on. I mean, Jacob Shepard is one of them. If we'd have got him, my word, what a player on the left wing he would have been. The other one we lost out on was called Bragg, I think. It was him, Cameron Bragg. And look, that's the level of player our director of football is trying to sign. Unfortunately, they both rejected us over wage. I'd imagine they didn't really have much intent of joining and he was just trying to convince them. But he's now going for some really good players again. And the players he's brought in, absolutely excellent. So you were with me as we drew against two of the big sides. We met Herbert and Anderson for the first time, who both featured. Then Mattia Balducci, I think an offer had gone in for. He joined the club, 220 quid a week. Solid, natural centre midfielder and holding mid. You can see he's a really good squad player already. So another good addition in there. And then it got even better because after Bragg rejected us, he went for Charlie Finney, who is a 22-year-old centre midfielder. Very naturally fit, tries long shots, can cover left back, which is a problem for us as well. Fairly professional personality, left footed, which gives us a little bit of balance. And when you consider we lost Rafferty Pedder in the summer, to have Balducci and Finney in, I couldn't be happier. And the results since you've been here are fabulous because we still only have one defeat this season. Now, I know that it's a little bit skewed because we played two lower league sides in the FA Cup. We played Truro and Folkestone at home who are going to be relegation battlers, I would imagine. But Oxford City away and particularly having at Waterlooville who were the leaders away from home. Brilliant, brilliant results. So let's have a look at the goal starting to flow. A 4-1 win, Oxford City. Lloyd DeRose, Herbert and Yassin Torre got the goals. A half-time in that match, I honestly believed that Lewis Herbert was going to be done at the club. He'd given away the penalty to make things one all. He almost gave away a second. He lost a free header at the back post, which hit the woodwork. And then he just got his header. And since then, he's been absolutely fantastic. So can just be a confidence thing, a light switch moment. Lewis Herbert definitely had that. We then won 3-2 at home to Folkestone. That was thanks to an Alfie Lloyd hat-trick. It was also on a fan day as well. A 3-0 win away at Paul in the FA Cup. Jack Deakin, the lone striker, got his first two goals for the club. An own goal made it a comfortable passage through. Then the 2-1 win are what were the leaders at the time. They've massively fallen away since. I know they got a late goal and it was a grandstand finish, but we were thoroughly in control of that match. Etaluku with an early one, Lloyd with a penalty early in the second half. Brilliant display. We then won 2-1 against Chesson in the FA Cup third qualifying round to set up this Boreham Wood tie. Cocoraccio and Herbert with goals both from set pieces. And then a 3-0 win against Truro last weekend. Herbert yet again now can't stop scoring. Alfie Lloyd and Oli Ewing's free kick made it a really comfortable win. What a spell of fixtures. We're scoring goals. We're looking aggressive. We're playing some really nice stuff. 
And we've now bizarrely got National League North opposition in the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup. What on earth they're doing in the North, I don't know. We've talked about this before. It's going to be a really interesting match. And actually, let me just have a little look at this because they're in the North and in the South are St. Albans. Now, St. Albans is further north than Boreham Wood. I can tell you that with some certainty. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with the geography of these two leagues. But either way, we'll accept it and we'll be facing a side that we don't usually play. But this is about a chance at the FA Cup first round and then a chance at running away in the title race. Because at the moment, after a brilliant run of fixtures, we are five points clear of Dartford, the only side to beat us this year. We drew with Weymouth. We beat Haven and Waterlooville, and even that lose game on the opening day. Starting to look a better result now when you look at the table, isn't it? So let's go and get into this FA Cup tie. A chance to start building fitness again. But let's be honest, we are in dreamland. We have got a squad of 16 that would play our league fixtures. And then sitting off the bench another seven. We've got a 23-man senior squad. This is an absolute pleasure and we've got to make the most of it. So a little bit of a mix and match when it comes to the starting team today. We've basically integrated a few players who are very good. But look at this, with five or six rotated, we've got everyone above basically two and a half star ability. Because Grego Cox is that in his best role. I've kept in all the first teamers who have got a light match load. So Ewan, Lloyd, uh, we've got Grant at the back as well and the goalkeeper of course. The 11 though is very strong. We've got the three lone players building fitness. Finney in for his first start as well. And overall, a really good side. So we've got Josh Keeley in goal. Anderson and Woodthorpe, the fullbacks with Beecroft and Grant as centre-half. Balducci, Finney and Ewing, the midfield three. Etaluku, Greg Cox, and Lloyd, the front three. We've got a chance against a really good side. It's top of the National League South v top of the National League North. This will be a real barometer of how we might do if we go up to the National League. And here are the teams for a very big FA Cup tie. Some good players in that Boreham Wood team. They've got some quality in the side. Junior Tienzia, a left back, really good player. We've managed him somewhere before. Eric Souza is a threat going forward. Alfie Doherty is a good player. And Joe Williams, a goal scorer. So they've got quality. Look, they're top of their league for a reason. Not sure what they're doing in that league rather than our one. But given how good their side is and how they're running away with it, I'm pretty glad on paper, to be honest. So let's go and get through the dressing room. Let's tell the lads to impress us. We'll go through the match preview, get into the first half, and hopefully reach the proper rounds of the FA Cup. Something I don't think we've managed in yet. Well, here we are, just three minutes in, and Oli Ewan has got a dangerous-looking free kick here. Curls it towards the top corner and just over the bar. Had the keeper scrambling, but didn't make anything of it. No shots on target just yet. We're still being positive. We're still trying to chase the game. With 15 gone, it's currently goalless. And it's been a very quiet game since then as well. Two very good sides cancelling each other out as we're 10 to the break. We're trying to release Alfie Lloyd, but it's not worked out. Bit of a clash of styles as well. Boreham Wood probably got much better footballers. We're a more athletic side with a lot more quality on the break. Having said that, they just did us down the sides. Erico Souza should have done better, but thankfully Keeley able to easily save. He goes long towards Lloyd. Again, that game plan not really working on this occasion. We might have to change it up a bit second half as Britain goes to Tienzia on the left. On a booking, can we get at him? Not with a ball like that, it's far too easy. Stevenson's in. The offside flag should be up, and the offside flag is up. The left back came flying out of position, not sure what he was doing, but he got away with it. Five to the break, Boreham Wood are dominant, and I'm going to drop back to cautious, because I feel we need to treat this like an away game now. We're getting completely outclassed. They're having most of the ball, they're having most of the chances. Let's get through the dressing room, let's stay in the game, We'll try and hit them on the counter because why on earth is half of our team complacent? Let's get to the defenders first. I need you to do better. I mean, I don't know what this response is. Oli Ewan, we're going to talk to individually if we can. We're going to ask him, you've not been good enough. He's very motivated. That somehow G Boyd Beecroft up. Must be sitting next to him in the changing room. Etaluku looks nervous. I've got faith in you. He seems pleased. Let's get these boys on the front foot. I think you can tell a lot of these aren't match fit. And the question I've got as we approach the hour mark, and particularly with a replay looking more and more possible, is do I take off some of the senior players for midweek? Or do I bring on three more first teamers for those building fitness as Davis in down the right? Chance to cross in. It's a good ball. William shots deflected. Really good work from Beecroft, to be honest. And it goes through comfortably to Keeley. But there's only one team who looks like winning this. Can we counter as speed? 
not with a header like that. We're giving it straight back to them and normally in our own half as well. As Timpson goes long towards Williams. Great knockdown for Souza and another brilliant save. The flag goes up for offside. Keeley wasn't to know. He has been absolutely sublime. I'm just going to try and bring this down a bit because we are looking in trouble. So in terms of our style, let's go a little less direct. Let's go a little lower tempo. Is there anything else we can do? Probably not. I just want to try and keep the ball a bit because we're getting completely outclassed. And with 25 minutes to go, we're back with a throw-in. I mean, you bring down the direct pass in and then Grant gets it from a throw-in. Basically recreates the John Smith's have it advert. Hoofs it straight back to their centre half. And Beecroft starts again with Anderson to Grego Cox. Can we create one chance? One shot on target. That's all I'm asking for. As Grego Cox runs the whole way across the pitch, gives it to Finney. Good through ball attempt, just under hit. Timson does really well with that. Lloyd would have been in and I would have trusted him. And Lloyd has basically played a poor back pass from 50 yards away. Britton gets in. It's another stunning save. Keeley is having a game of his life in goal. I'm going to encourage the lads. We need a bit more. But what on earth can we do here? We've got to make changes. At the back, Kamal Grant is nervous. He's had an awful game. I'm going to bring on Cocoraccio. In midfield, I'm going to bring on Yassin Torre for Greg Cox. I'm also going to bring on De Rose. But is it going to be for Finney or for Borducci? I think it's going to be for Finney. He's a little bit further back in his fitness development. Balducci will go into midfield, DeRose in the holding role, he's 6-1, he's a little bit more physically imposing and we're going to leave it at that. And here we are with 12 minutes to go, at the moment we're surviving as DeRose goes back to his keeper, Keeley carries the ball forward and to be fair, even based on performances and results you've seen on camera and in the last month since, we are a better side away from home still, there's no doubt about that. Long ball forward is headed away by Cocoraccio and Woodthorpe brings it down to Etaluku. Through to Lloyd, this is the chance to counter. 78 minutes without a shot on target. Can we create one moment of magic? Etaluku gets it again, goes alone, shoots from distance. Slight deflection on it, straight through to the keeper. Lovely work, we've had a shot on goal. But Borenwood, two and a half expected goals. You've got a feel for them. 10 shots on target, 60% of the ball. And they have got nothing to show for it. It's the magic of the FA Cup for us. As Ewan heads forward towards Lloyd, it's really poor. Long clearance from Borenwood, who are just starting to go more direct themselves. Beecroft gets it a centre half. Long towards Lloyd, it's poor again. It's aimless again. The change of tact has made absolutely no difference. Though Cocoraccio nicks it. Balducci to Etaluku. I think Lloyd's offside. I don't want to get excited. Oh, it deflects into the keeper's arms. The flag didn't go up either. It would have been the winner. Two shots on target, I think, although that's not listed as one, and it's going to peter out to a nil-nil draw. Certainly not a bore draw, Boar and Wood were excellent, but it's going to be an FA Cup replay, because at full time, it's nil-nil. We do not deserve to be in the hat. Let's get cracking. Well, just to illustrate our point a little bit, 11 saves Josh Keeley has made. The goalkeeping was certainly a joy to behold. It does also change our plans for this episode as well, because the Slough v Maidenhead match has been rearranged, so the FA Cup tie can take precedence. So due to that draw, undeservedly, we're now going for an FA Cup double header. Can we make it through to the first round? We'll know who we're going to face if we get through as well. So let's get to Wednesday night and see if we can right the wrong and at least play a little bit better than that one. Well, we're back almost immediately because on Sunday lunchtime, we have got another new sign-in. The man who was being offered a contract when we arrived for this episode, Luther Munakandafa. I don't know how my pronunciation is there. Apologies if it's bad. He's on 220 quid a week till the end of the season. He is very versatile and he is very high quality. Three star ability, four and a half potential, only 22 years of age. Wadham will welcome him. His report suggests he is an attacking midfielder on the right. It looks like he's natural in all three positions. He is. That is a real versatile option to the squad. Not the best finisher. Probably won't be second choice there. On the left and the right, we've now got basically Etaluku and Grego Cox as backups. Him and Torre will be the starters. That's a fabulous team. Six foot tall, not great in the air, but he's got the height, he's got the physical attributes, and he's a great dribbler. His crossing's not bad at all. His first touch decent too. Very, very good signing. Oh look, 1.8 thousand extra followers on social media because we've signed an international. That's a really nice touch in FM. Let's hope it affects the attendances like that too. 
Well, this is basically turning into a transfer special now. I'm in absolute dreamland. George Cottam has made another offer. I don't know why we need another striker, but four-star ability James Kroll with four and a half potential at 22. Now, when he's gone for someone of this quality before this season, like we saw with Bragg, like we saw with the other winger who I've forgotten the name of, they haven't got done. They've rejected us over wage. But look at this player. He was scoring one in three for Chesterfield in the National League last year. One in three for Bromley and Southend at that level. He is a ridiculous signing. Well, defeat expected against Boreham Wood by both board and supporters in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round replay. We have also found out who we'll be facing in the first round. And it's another familiar name. Because if we get through today, we will be facing the same side that knocked us out in the fourth qualifying round last year, which is National League Eastleigh. They're a very good side, but we ran them close away from home. And if we get through, I'm pretty sure the tie is at home. So let's go and get through to this Boreham Wood one. There was nothing in the original game that suggested we are going to win this. They are masters of the FA Cup in real life as well. So let's see how we get on. Okay then, a couple of potentially odd team selections today. I'm still trying to build a little bit of fitness. I'm trying to rotate and find my best 11. But overall, I feel we're a little more solid in this one. We've got Keely in goal, who surely can't be that good for us again. Woodthorpe and Anderson stay as the fullbacks. There's no point bringing in the attacking threat of Bryant. We might as well keep the best defenders there. Herbert comes in alongside Grant as centre-half. Bit of extra pace, bit of extra aerial threat from set pieces. If we can win one, that is. Wadham in a holding role just to give us defensive solidity. And he's got the best natural fitness, so should recover for the weekend. Then Ewan and DeRose in midfield. We've dropped Finney to the bench and Balducci. They're both available to come on. And then we've brought in the new man, Lufer, on the left. Torre over on the right. And the lovely thing about those two playing, and if Grego Cox comes in in fairness, is those three can just rotate between the two positions. We can keep falling the defence and trying to change things up as the game goes on. We've got Alfie Lloyd up front through the middle. He's had a brilliant season so far. But can he deliver tonight? Can he get a little bit of service at least? We've got a strong bench if we need it. But this 11 has got to do better than we played at the weekends. Well, two changes for Jordan Much's Boreham Wood side. In come Parker and Branham, but it's a very strong team regardless. We're going to get through the dressing room, encourage the lads. Taylor Anderson looking complacent. Why? Put yourselves in the right frame of mind. You just got battered by them at the weekend and were so lucky to get a draw. Let's very quickly switch the positions for these two as well. So we're just going to allow them to swap positions with the left and right winger. Let's get through the dressing room, through the match preview into the first half of Boreham Wood. Can't get any worse, can it? As we're back almost immediately on the right-hand side, Boreham Wood on the front foot early, as we've seen so often in these games so far. Long ball's headed away by Grant to DeRose. I'm hoping that counter-attacking style will work a bit better here. Generally has been better for us this season and last, though it's over the top to Williams. He's in straight away. And after a minute and 15 seconds, Keeley is to the rescue already. Not going to be very different this game, is it? Boreham Wood very much on top. Souza puts the corner into the front post, headed away. Roberts keeps it in, does he? No, out for a throw in. We survive. Two minutes gone. It's all the hosts. They're dominating again. So we've got a throw on the right with Anderson. Still only three and a half on the clock. The long balls just aren't working against them. Ewing's header there is poor. And it's not the fact that we're playing direct, because we've done that a lot this season. It's finding the pass rather than just punting it. As DeRose looks for the ball. That's better. The new signing's in on debut. Can he be a hero? You bet he can. Muna can daffer. Four minutes into his debut. Lovely ball by the returning DeRose. And the goalkeeper maybe should have kept it out. 1-0 maidenhead from one shot on target. Does it give us confidence? As there's a ball up to Ewan and Lewis Herbert. I've said it. Since those first two and a half games where you saw him on camera, he was awful. He has become a superstar, solid at the back, brilliant at the other end from set pieces. Two shots, two goals, and yet again, we're better on the road as Davis throws into Britain. Boreham Wood will now go very aggressive, you'd imagine. Ball to the edge of the box, is headed in, and William shot. I'm not sure how he missed that. Three or four yards out, and it's straight at Keeley as they're back with a corner again. Sousa up to Davis. 2-1. Game on. 17 minutes gone. It's a very different game to the last one. But Boreham Wood, you can't argue. They're still the better side. Well, a slight issue that Curtis DeRose has picked up a knock. I'm just trying to get him to the 30-minute mark because I don't feel Finney's got more than 60 in him. Who knows what we'll do if it goes to extra time. As Souza, lovely curling effort just over. They're starting to look a threat. 
They're starting to apply the pressure they did in the first game. And we're starting to look a little bit worried. De Rose will come off. On comes Charlie Finney. And that's the beauty of this new added squad depth. We've got the opportunity to make changes and still be as strong. As we come to half time, they've certainly not had as many chances as the first game, but they definitely deserve to not be behind. As Ewing gets on the end of a cleared header. Not well enough though. Ball into Davis. Off the line. Davis has come into that team and he is looking such a threat in the air. There's three minutes of stoppage time in the first half. I think we're going to survive them. And we're 2-1 up at the break. We've not deserved it. We've only had the two shots on target. But I don't care. We're winning the game. There's complacent players everywhere. No idea why. We've got everyone delighted. Let's get into the second half. We'll play on the counter and we'll try and cling on. As Woodthorpe's got a throw on the left-hand side. Advanced position towards Alfie Lloyd. Headed away as far as Luther. He loses out this time. Not at the best debut, to be honest, aside from his goal. But it is the all-important moment as Roberts gives it to Souza. Boreham would break in again. We score two and lose. I'd be so disappointed. But the goals are starting to flow. Herbert does well there. Ewan finds Torre. He runs at the defence. Lots of pressure on them. Ball through isn't good enough. Finney finds Torre again. Good sliding tackle from Boreham Wood. Souza downfield is turning into a cracker of an FA Cup tie. And Roberts finds Williams. Holds the ball up. Good challenge, Ewing. Wadham gets it back to Anderson. A reminder, we're still only on key highlights here. Not sure what's key about this. Long ball forward to Britton. Back to Davis. This is going to be the chance. Britton spins his man in one-on-one. -on -one and it's 2-2. Two -two. You can't argue if they deserve it. They've been by far the better side across the two games. And with five gone in the second half, it's a long time for us to try and hold on. I just worry how this game's going to affect us at the weekend because it's been chaotic. It's been very hectic. and There's been a lot of energy expended. There's a long ball forward which Wadham just hoofs downfield. Lloyd loses the header. I've got to go back to the drawing board because this style, it just isn't working against them. But we dropped the direct passing last time and it didn't work. And now we've had a penalty against. That was a good tackle for me. Woodthorpe got the ball. It certainly changed direction. But Britain's got the penalty. If he scores it, We'll think about the weekend. Does Josh Keeley come to the rescue again? No. That was a really poor penalty. And he probably should have saved it. Let's go and get to the substitutions. I'm just going to think about the league now. So with two subs left, I'm looking probably based on the fitness at Alfie Lloyd and maybe Woodthorpe at left back. So he'll be replaced by Richard Bryan. And we'll bring on Jack Deakin up front for Alfie Lloyd. They're going to be the changes for the last half an hour. We are going to drop the tempo slightly, not that it's made the slightest bit of difference, and we'll just see how we get on. 62 minutes played, Boreham Wood have turned around a two-goal deficit, and let's be fair, they thoroughly deserve it over the two games. We've taken advantage of our only two shots on target, and it's still not been enough. 15 to go, Deakin flicks on, and the goalkeeper comes flying out there. Bit worried about Herbert's fitness in defence. Someone we probably don't want to be missing at the weekend. Because the rest of the defenders have been poor. Britson's in. He's put it wide. Should have been four. Boreham would have missed so many chances in these matches. With 10 to go. It looks like they're getting through. No first round of the FA Cup for us. And after the hectic nature of the first hour. It's gone very quiet in the end. We did apparently manage another couple of shots on target. But... Boreham would have had an expected goals of about six and a half over the two games. They thoroughly deserve to win. And if both of us do go up from our respective leagues to the National League, I think we know there's a bit of work to be done here. Well, given the start to the season and the fact that although he's still trying to bring in that brilliant strike up, most of the squad is now together. I think we're going to leave it a little while. Try and get to December and the festive season. It's a really interesting month, that December period. So we'll show two of the games from that month, probably the first two or last two, depending on how we're getting on. But if you did enjoy this episode, a surprise FA Cup doubleheader, disappointment, but ultimately against a side who are far better than anyone in this league, then please do put a thumbs up on it. Let me know what you think of all the signings because this director of football is blowing me away. And now maybe it's actually going to be a good thing that we can get back to focusing on the league. A harder run of fixtures coming up that may have some impact on our results. But if you're looking forward to finding out and seeing how we get on in our first optimistic season of the head coach, then please do subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll be back in a couple of days to find out how we're getting on. But in the meantime, we'll be back with a new season transfer special in our Build a Nation save. That's tomorrow at 3.30. You can get up to date with the playlist so far up in the eye above. Come and follow us on the Twitch channel too. Check out the podcast where I'm currently sole hosting. And thank you very much for watching as always. Your continued support with the channel. And I'll see you back here in a couple of days time.
for some big games in the title race. <laughs> 